and our first talk today uh, on this session will be about MIMO ground station for satellite applications from George Vardakis from Libre Space Foundation and Elektra Karakosta from Aristotle University uh, of Thessaloniki. Uh, and uh, it's quite interesting to see such a talk uh, because I don't know how they get to manage to collaborate with each other because they're coming from the extreme points of Greece. The one is in super southern Greece and the other is in super northern Greece. Uh, and uh, it's interesting to see such a, a convenient happening together. So, yeah, yeah. We, we are a huge country, so that's interesting. Let's all welcome them. Hi everyone, uh, I'm George, this is Lectra. Thank you, Piers, for the intro. Truth is, Crete likes Thessaloniki and Thessaloniki likes Crete very much, so we are uh, very cool with that. So we are uh, going to present to you our project, uh, which is about uh, implementing a MIMO ground station for satellite applications. Uh, we are doing this project together uh, with Aphrodite, who is here, and Nikos Kanamolegos, uh, who is serving, serving in the army. So, today uh, we are going to give you uh, an overview of the project. Uh, we are going to talk about the, algorithm, the algorithms that we are using and the challenges that we have to face. We are going to show you some results and then we are going to, to talk to you about the next steps of this project because this is a work in progress and actually we are in the middle of it. So, this is a cutting edge. So, um, this is a, a sub-activity of the SDR Makerspa Makerspace project, uh, which uh, Manolis talked to you about yesterday. Uh, as I said, it is about, it is about developing uh, a functioning uh, antenna array for, uh, as a ground station. And uh, we are going to use four uh, antennas mounted on, to, um, on two or four SDRs, depending on, the, on which SDR we are going to use. Uh, we are focusing on the, on the receiving uh, side, so we are going to perform beamforming uh, in order to, re to uh, improve the signal reception. Uh, beamforming is a technique uh, for uh, steering the, the beam of the array towards a desired direction. And this signal processing is going to happen on GNU radio. So why, why are we doing this? Uh, um, an antenna array can be quite uh, more uh, easy to be constructed than a rotator setup. You only have four antennas and the SDRs. Everything else happens uh, in software. Um, it can potentially have um, much better signal to noise ratio uh, than a single uh, omnidirectional antenna setup. It uh, can suppress interference from um, known sources, from known interfering sources, and someone could possibly observe multiple uh, satellites simultaneously. So, um, the first uh, thing uh, we had to do for this project was uh, to take a look at the lit literature, see what uh, algorithms for beamforming are out there, and uh, choose which, which of these w we would test, and uh, consequently uh, implement for our array. So, um, one could uh, divide the, the algorithms into two broad categories, uh, the blind estimators and the non-blind estimators. So, the blind estimators do not uh, use information about uh, the angle of arrival of the signal. So, they try to steer the beam of the array towards the most um, uh, prominent uh, source, so the most powerful source. Uh, that it observes. The non-blind estimators use uh, the information of the angle of arrival of the signal and they steer it towards that direction. So um, this is more suitable for us because we expect to be a part of the SATNOX network and uh, have uh, the information about um, the direction of arrival of the signal from the, the TLEs. Um, so these are the, algor the algorithms that we ended up testing. Uh, from the non-blind estimators, a phase shift beamformer, the MVDR and the LCMV, and from the blind estimators, the LSCM and the, the LMS. Uh, before showing you the results from our simulations with these uh, algorithms, 
I'm going to talk, you, to, talk to you about uh, the challenges, that uh, one challenge, one big challenge, that we'll have to face in the second phase of this project when we'll have to, build, to actually build the array. So, as I said, uh, in order to construct an array with four elements, you need more than one SDR device because most uh, devices out there do not um, have MIMO functionality. So we have to combine them. Um, and in order for our algorithms to work properly, these devices must be synchronized both in frequency and in time. The, the frequency synchronization between different devices can be lost uh, due to the different, uh, the different oscillators that each device has, while the time offset can be lost uh, because of um, different sampling intervals of the ADCs, the analog digital converters, or uh, various uh, delays that can happen on, uh, the, on the receiving chain. So if we have two SDR devices that observe one common signal, we would like to see this thing. So this is two, uh, two signals uh, that align perfectly with each other. So this, this, um, uh, of this means that uh, an illuminator is at the same distance from the, the two antennas that I have. So I, I want to see this thing exactly. But what I do actually see is this. I see two signals with uh, a, a little uh, offset in frequency, a very small offset in frequency. Uh, and if I ensure the frequency synchronization, I get this because of the time offset that I, I talked to you about earlier. So we see that the samples of the two signals are not perfectly aligned. There is a small uh, phase offset. Now, what can we, what can we do to, to solve this thing? For frequency synchronization, we are going to use an external uh, common clock uh, in order to uh, to synchronize the, the frequency, they will use the same clock. For time synchronization, we are going to uh, synchronize them uh, in software, digitally, uh, where we will um, transmit um, a known sequence, and we will receive that sequence from all our antennas, and we will synchronize them based on that known reference signal. This, uh, this will be done uh, by using the out of trig radio module uh, GR DevSync. Dev -Sync. So, now we are going to show you some of our initial results. Electra? Thank you. Um, we used two platforms uh, for uh, simulating um, uh, the different algorithms. Um, uh, in Octave, uh, we simulated a simple AWGN channel uh, for all the algorithms uh, that uh, George mentioned earlier. And uh, in uh, GNU Radio, we utilized the uh, GRLeo module and um, uh, simulated uh, only the LCMV and the phase shift beamformer algorithms in uh, the space channel. Um, <coughs> we actually simulated an entire pass over uh, the ground station and uh, with uh, the Monte Carlo method, we extracted the uh, bit error rate for uh, different uh, noise uh, levels of our uh, receiver um, device. So, um, yeah, we simulated uh, some uh, um, common scenarios uh, of um, 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 setups uh, with interference uh, or uh, uh, with only one interferer. Um, we also simulated uh, the case where we have a frequency mismatch between uh, the carrier of the incoming signal and uh, the frequency that uh, um, we assumed uh, in order to construct uh, the antenna array, and also uh, the scenario where we have a knuckle mismatch between the incoming signal and uh, the direction of arrival that uh, we have actually assumed uh, the signal to have. And, um, um, here you can see the results from uh, Octave, and um, <coughs> in this case we, we have uh, um, assumed that we have an, um, um, another signal uh, apart from the desired in a, a low elevation, um, something like 20 degrees, and uh, you can see that uh, here LCMV performs uh, better than uh, any other algorithm. When uh, the interferer is uh, uh, on a higher altitude, uh, for example, uh, when the signal um, 
comes uh, to our antenna from another satellite, we see that uh, the uh, performance of uh, the algorithms is not uh, uh, that bad in comparison to uh, the previous graph, and uh, most of uh, the algorithms have a similar uh, performance. Uh, in the cases of the frequency and oh, sorry and uh, angle offset, uh, we don't um, see uh, a lot of differences uh, with uh, the case uh, of um, uh, no interference. And um, the, the results from GNU Radio, um, <coughs> you can see that uh, when uh, we have a, a low noise floor, um, our um, algorithms are actually. Um, behave like uh, there's some kind of filter and they insert their own loss to the system so uh, the um, uh, single antenna case is actually uh, better in terms of uh, bit error rate uh, but uh, when uh, we insert interference uh, the algorithms uh, uh, greatly outperform uh, the antenna the um, um, uh, case of the single antenna um, <coughs> Those are the case of the frequency and angle offset. Again, you can see uh, a similar uh, behavior uh, with uh, uh, the case of uh, no interference. In all uh, uh, the above cases, you uh, can see that um, by using uh, more antenna elements, uh, we have uh, uh, the opportunity to actually receive our signal better um, in comparison to the case uh, of uh, one antenna only. So, uh, our next steps. Uh, we actually want to build uh, the ground station and uh, um, compare uh, the simulated values with real values uh, after the integration of the ground station with uh, the Satnox network and uh, also optimize uh, the synchronization of uh, the antennas to get uh, more uh, accurate results. Um, so, if we do we have time uh, for George to uh, show a demo? Okay. Yes, I wanted you to see actually how this uh, beamformer looks in the frequency domain. So I'm going to run this. So this is a this is a pass, uh, a satellite pass over our ground station. I have uh, created this uh, constellation uh, diagram. I tried to at least. Uh, so in the x-axis it is the, the azimuth and on the y-axis is the elevation so you can see it moving. It is uh, getting the, the azimuth and elevation of the satellite. Um, and here you can see in, uh, in blue we have the signal that only one antenna would receive. This is what we get with the LCMV beamformer. So you can see if I increase the F that it is quite lower and you can see also uh, it, uh, it's a bit uh, wobbly it uh, jumps a bit uh, there uh, I'm not entirely sure yet why this happens um, but uh, anyway we as we showed in the results uh, the, um, the outcome the, the result is actually uh, better than the um, one antenna case so yeah, it, uh, we, we want to see with this first phase uh, if uh, there was a point in going on with this, uh, with this project, and we think that uh, we are good to go. So that's all. I saw in your uh, demo uh, something that was not uh, so clear from uh, your plots. Uh, does the signal, the received signal uh, with the MIMO ground station increase uh, also in, uh, uh, in the received power or your the scenario increases not only from uh, lowering uh, the noise floor? Okay, so uh, you will see that uh, the, the level of the signal is actually the same. So if, if you concentrate on the BPSK, this is a BPSK, uh, it actually has the same level. Okay. But what is different is the noise floor. 
Okay, so uh, but uh, I would expect because you have uh, four antennas, let's say, so it's uh, four times. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, yes, uh, but the point is that um, these algorithms, these algorithms perform normalization. So when it 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 doesn't add and so if you if you add many antennas, okay. it won't so, go. So that uh, what you are showing us, it's not uh, the the exact uh, uh, power of the signal, but a normalized version of it. Yeah, the the, okay. the MIMO is a normalized okay. version. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's why you don't see the noise floor going way up together with the signal. Thanks, course, thanks. But yes. Uh, what's the uh, the additional compute power? needed for the additional the compute antennas. power. Yeah, uh, we expect it to, to be significant, uh, but uh, because we are, still, we are still in the phase of the simulations, we haven't run yet the experiments for the um, CPU utilization, for example, but uh, it's, it's the next step to do. And we also want to perform some uh, optimizations. So, yeah, but it will be quite significant. So a normal Raspberry, I don't think it, it could handle this kind of thing. So you need something a bit bigger. <laughs>